Guys, this is test 29, game 3. This is the Language Research Awards game. It's an ordering game. We know this because the awards are presented consecutively, one at a time, and as such, there must be an order in which they are presented. Now, we've got a lot of variables here, F, G, H, J, K, L, S. I've put down that G is not first, simply because that's the first rule that they give us. The other rules are all before-after relationships. They are loosely relating the variables to each other, so for this reason, I want to have a diagram that represents those loose relationships. So I'm going to simply lay out the rules one at a time and connect them as I go to create a big web of relationships. So the first rule, aside from G not being first, is that H is before K. So I'm simply going to write down H dash K. The next rule tells us L is before J, but none, neither of these variables is L or J, so I'm going to skip that rule and come back to it when we will hopefully be able to more easily link it together to what we already will have by that point. The next rule tells us that F is touching H in either order. So either it's FH or it's HF. So I'm laying out both of those possibilities and I'm just going to box them together. So it's FH or HF, but either way they are a unit. Next they tell us that K is immediately before or immediately after L. So same thing, we have KL or LK as a unit occurring consecutively in either order. So the FH unit is before the KL unit. And finally they tell us the rule that we skipped L is before J. So dash J coming afterwards. S was never mentioned. S could be pretty much anywhere. And G could essentially be anywhere as well as long as we do not put G first. So this is right here is our main diagram for the game. These are the variables that could go practically anywhere. So just keep them in mind and remember that G cannot go, go first. So question number 14. They don't give us an orientation question. They jump right in with a general must be true question. So let's just look at our diagram and make use of it as we run through the choices. So must F go before J? Yes, F is either here or there within the H, F unit, and before the KL, before the J. So yes, F before J is a must. It's our answer to number 14. I will look at the rest though. Must F go before S? S could go anywhere. S could go after. F, S could come before, so B is gone. Must G go before K? Yeah, G could go in between the H, F, and KL units. It could also go before all of that as long as S came even before it. So C is gone. Must G go before S? G and S, you know, they're both relatively ambiguous. They could go in either order, keeping in mind that G can't be first, so D is gone. And then E, S before H, S could go before or after H, so E is gone, leaving A if you didn't get it before. Next, number 15, if H is fourth, what must be true? So if H is fourth, we're going to have to have at least three things before it. What could those three things be? Well, they can't be K, L, and J, so they have to be S, G, and F. So we're going to have F coming before H, so HF is not a possibility. We're going to have G and S before the, the, this unit right here, and G can't be first, so S will have to come before it, giving us S before G, before the FH thing, before KL or LK, before J. So what must be true? Must F go on 5? No, F is on 3 in this case, so A is gone. Must G go on 3? No, G is on 2, so B is gone. Must J go on 6? No, J is on 7 because we have S, G, F, H, K, L, L, K, J. So J is last. That can't be true. It's on a must. It's not even a, a could. K on 5? K could go on 5 if L was after it, or K could go on 6 if L was before it. So there's an ambiguity there. So D is not a must, leaving E by elimination. And if we look at E, S on 1, of course, yes, is a must. So E is our answer to number 15. Next, number 16, if G is on 3, what could be true? So G can't be before the FH thing because then the only thing that could go before G would be S, and that would place G on 2 rather than on 3. So for that reason, we're going to have to put G between the HF unit and the KL unit. That's the new state of affairs, and S will have to come later than this. So it's going to be HF, FH on 1, 2, G on 3, then S, K, L, and J all coming after in some order. So what could be true? Could F be fourth? No, F is first or second. A is gone. Could J be fifth? No, because we have F, H, that's one, two. We have G, that's three. K, L, that's four and five. So the earliest J could be is six, and then S would go after it on seven. So J cannot be five, but J could be six. 
So C is our answer for number 16. I will look at the rest, though. Could K be on 2? No, K is at the earliest on 4 if we have F, H, H, F, G coming before it. So D is gone. And then E, S on 5. S cannot be on 5. It might seem that it could, but we're having at least F, H, and G coming before it. But then it can't be on 5 in particular because either it's before the KL thing or after the KL thing. It cannot be right in the middle of the KL thing because they are a unit. So that's not possible either. E's gone. Leaving C is our answer for number 16. Next, number 17. What's the earliest that J could appear? Well, J's or at its earliest point would happen if S and G were coming later. So I'm going to put S and G on the two slots, two going after J, meaning J would be 5 at the earliest. G S and G would be 6 and 7. And then we'd have FHKL going on 1, 2, 3, 4 in some combination. So for that reason, the earliest J could be is 5. We're having S and G after it's 6 and 7, but we have to have these four things before J at a minimum. So J's earliest is 5, making C our answer for number 17. Next, number 18, if J was before S. So J before S, I'm putting S after it. So G is the only thing that remains ambiguous, and of course, G cannot go on 1. So G is going to be between the units. It could be between KL and J. Could be between J and S. Could be after S. We don't know. Lots of ambiguity there. So it could be true except question. Find the four things that could be true. Eliminate them. And whatever remains is our answer. So could G go immediately before F? No, it cannot because that would place G first, which violates the rule, first rule of the game, that G cannot be first. A is a cannot, so it's our answer to number 18. I will look at the rest, though. Could G go immediately before J? Yeah, we said we could have J here and then J immediately after. That could work, so B's gone. H immediately before L. Yeah, if G wasn't here between the two units, we could have H on 2 and then L on 3. That would work, so C's gone. Could we have K immediately before J? Yeah, if we had the LK ordering, J could come immediately afterwards, and we'd have G not here but somewhere else. So D's gone, and then S immediately before G. Yeah, if we had S on 6, G on 7, that could work. So E's gone, leaving A if you didn't get it before. Next, number 19, the order would be completely determined if. So which of the following choices, if true, would allow us to fully determine the layout of the variables, leaving no ambiguity at all? So if you look at the choices, you want to look for something that's incredibly limiting. And each choice is giving us two pieces of information regarding immediacy, adjacency, you know, things being consecutive. So given that we're only getting two pieces of information, we want that information to be as powerful as possible. So you don't want to waste one of your two pieces of information. So how would we waste pieces of information? We would waste pieces of information if we had the information regarding what happens within a unit, like KL versus LK, or telling us it's FH versus HF. That's a waste because there is other information that could tell us the specific ordering of those units while also telling us additional information. For example, if we learned that S was immediately before F, that would by default be also telling us that the ordering of F and H is FH rather than HF, while also, of course, telling us where S is going. So you, any choice that tells you what's happening within a unit is less valuable than a choice that tells you what's happening with part of a unit and also one of S, G, or J, which are rather ambiguous in comparison. So I want to look through the choices here not fully eliminating things that tell us what's happening within a unit, but somewhat telling us that. So I'm going to semi-eliminate things here. A tells us about KL. I'm going to cross off A. I'm not really eliminating it here. I just want to clarify that. I'm simply deciding where I'm going to start. B tells us about FH. That's within a unit, so I'm going to eliminate B here. C tells us FLKJ. That's all outside units. That looks decent, so I'll keep it. D tells us GFLJ, that's outside units, not within them, so I'll keep it. E tells us about HF, so I'm eliminating that. So I'm going to start by looking at C and D. Remember, I have not disproven A, B, and E. I'm simply deciding to start with C and D instead. So C tells us F is immediately before L, which tells us it's HFLK. 
So I'm going to write down H, F, L, K as all one unit, meaning that we have J coming after it and then S and G somewhere. C also tells us K, J, so I'm going to put J within that box as well. The problem is that S and G are still floaters here for choice C. So for that reason, this has not fully determined the layout. Choice C's information was not strong enough to determine that. So C is not fully determined, and I'm going to eliminate C for real. All gone. I'm going to look at D now and hope that D is enough, because if not, A, B, and E are going to be a chore to work through, and no real easy way to tell between them which one's more likely. So I'm going to look at D now. So D tells us G is immediately before F, giving us a GF box. Of course, F is immediately before H, so I'm going to box that on as well. The other portion of the choice tells us L is immediately before J, telling us we've got KLJ occurring consecutively. So KLJ is a box, GFH is also a box. Now we don't know, perhaps something is coming in between these two boxes at first glance. However, remember that G cannot be first, very important. So because G cannot be first, S, which is ambiguous right now, will have to go before that completing everything. That's all seven variables. Therefore, these boxes are actually joined, although it might not have appeared to be the case at first glance. All seven variables are included. It's S on 1, G on 2, F3, H4, K5, L6, J7. Fully determined, no ambiguity at all. So for that reason, D is our answer to number 19.